Paper is brought to you in part by the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. LHF is a recognized service organization of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, dedicated to translating and publishing the books of our Lutheran faith into more than 100 languages for our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. Learn how you can take part in their work at lhfmissions.org. Welcome to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Wheaton. Look around you. Sure doesn't look like love incarnate is sitting on the throne of the universe with all things in submission to Him. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a daily verse-by-verse Bible study with the church, past and present. Pastor Whedon is leading us in a study of the book of Hebrews. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Greetings, people loved by God. Remember that the key concept in Hebrews is better. So last time, in text after text from the Psalter and Deuteronomy, quoting from the Septuagint, that is the New Testament norm, the writer hammered home how Jesus was better than the angels. God never called the angels his only begotten, but he called Jesus that. He never ascribed to them the work of creation, but he ascribed it to Jesus. He never offered them a share on his throne, but he does to Jesus. In Psalm 110, the invitation, it sounds forth, sit at my right hand. In contrast, the angels are ministering spirits. They're sent out to minister for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. Picking up then, in the epistle to the Hebrews, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord... And it was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him? You have made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside of his control. At present, we do not see everything in subjection to him. But we see him, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Hebrews 2 Verses 1 to 9. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, out of fatherly love toward us poor sinners, you gave your Son, that we might believe in him and through faith in him be saved. Put your Spirit into our hearts, that we may continue in that faith till the end of our earthly pilgrimage. We ask it through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ready to dig in? Let's do it. Verse 1. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. How tirelessly God in his word reminds us of our chief duty. Hear, O Israel, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you, O Israel, if you would but listen to me. Psalm 81, verse 8. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, John 8. Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3. Here, abide, continue in. 
That's what the preacher here in Hebrews is exhorting his congregation to do. When things go roughly, don't you let go of the word. You grab it more tightly than ever. It's your anchor. It's what keeps you from being swept away. It's what rescues you from what Paul described in Ephesians 4, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. They need it, that anchor. You need it too. Verse 2. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Now running in the background here is the Jewish tradition, which the New Testament validates, that the law was given through the mediation of angels on Sinai. St. Paul refers to this in Galatians 3.19. St. Stephen does as well in the sermon before his stoning in Acts 7.38. St. Ephraim the Syrian thought it might point to the message of the angels that were sent to Sodom. But there's also an implied contrast between the salvation that Moses gave and the benefits God delivered through him and the great salvation that is delivered through Jesus. The golden mouth, St. John Chrysostom, he reflects, it is not from wars that Christ now rescues us, nor will he bestow on us the earth and the good things that are in the earth. Rather, it will be the dissolution of death, the destruction of the devil, the kingdom of heaven, everlasting life. For all these things are briefly expressed in, if we neglect so great a salvation. One last thought here. Note that the neglecting of salvation is directly connected with ceasing to pay ever closer attention to the catechesis they had received, the handing on to them of Jesus' words and teaching. It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. It, that is, such a great salvation, was declared first by the Lord. Hear that as the Lord Jesus, in the time during which he delivered over to his apostles the words His father had given him to share with the world so that the world might be saved. Those who heard means then those who heard him teach with their own ears, particularly the apostles and St. Paul. Jesus also instructed him, though, as he would say, as one untimely born. And as proof that they were handing on to us exactly the words Jesus had given them, and that it was his authority that was at work in them. You had those astounding signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Spirit at work in them. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 12, Paul would insist, The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. Think Peter's shadow healing. Think handkerchiefs and aprons that merely touched Paul's body, being carried to the sick and then being instantly healed. In all these miracles, the aim was the same. Listen to the message these men are bringing because it is from God. And how vital this was in that fluid period before the writings of the apostles were gathered into the New Testament. Now, I don't think it's an accident. That the miracles dial down, I did not say stop, I said dial down, precisely when they are no longer confirming the witness of the men who walked with Jesus. And folks, that's why the religious hucksters who are fixated with convincing you that they replicate the miracles of the apostles, and sometimes even call themselves apostles, they're simply barking up the wrong tree. Those miracles served their purpose. And they still do. By them, we know the truth of what the apostles receive from Jesus. Verse 5. For it is not to angels that God has subjected the world to come of which we are speaking. The world to come ties back to such a great salvation and the contrast with this life and this world. 
He speaks of the world to come, what our Lord most often calls the kingdom, as not subject to angels, but of course, instead being subject to Christ. Verse 6, it has been testified somewhere, what is man that you're mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You have made him for a little while lower than the angels. You've crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Ecce homo, Pilate had said, behold, the man. So the man, the son of man, is Jesus. Psalm 8 here is understood through the Paschal mystery in which Jesus, by dying for a little time, is indeed lower than the angels. But on the other side, after his resurrection, he's crowned with glory and honor, and the Father has put everything in subjection under his feet. Remember again, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. The Greek word, by the way, which the Septuagint uses, and this writer quotes, admits of either being degree or time, And in light of Jesus' passion, the preacher here runs with time. In other words, a little while instead of being just a little below. That's why it differs from Psalm 8 based on the Hebrew in your English Bible. Now, in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor. Here's another vital key to Hebrews. Faith is the assurance of things not seen. Look around you. Sure doesn't look like love incarnate is sitting on the throne of the universe with all things in submission to him. Horrible. Unthinkable things continue to befall from time to time, and the early Christians lived it with the horrible persecutions, and they haven't really let up in all the centuries since. Christ still suffers in his members, filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church, Colossians 1, 24. But Christians face the horrors in the conviction of a different vision. The speaker uses two different words for see in this passage, implying that there is seeing with the eyes, and then there is seeing with the eyes of faith. Think of how after witnessing the death of their beloved St. Polycarp, his disciples would append that feisty footnote to the account. The official responsible for his arrest was Herod. The high priest was Philip of Trails. And the proconsul was Stadius Quadratus. But the ruling monarch was Jesus Christ, who reigns forever and ever. To him be ascribed all glory, honor, majesty, and an eternal throne from generation to generation. Amen. Or think about how as St. Stephen was being stoned to death, and he certainly saw the people stoning him, he also used the eye of faith and saw something else. Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father, waiting to welcome his martyr home. Because of suffering death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Chrysostom comments on that, not for the faithful only, but for the whole world, for he indeed died for all. It was one man in exchange for the lot of us. And he came out of death alive, glorified, crowned. And he did that so that in him, you also might dance right out of death and into such a great salvation, into that kingdom, which is the age to come, when we will see even with our physical eyes, all that we've believed and known to be true without seeing. We will behold love on the throne. And our hearts will swell with joy and adoration. Use your eyes of faith till that joyous moment arrives, people loved by God, and pay ever closer attention to the words that give you that faith and that open your inner eyes to Jesus. Till next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 
Thanks for listening to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a listener-supported program. You can donate by check. Make your check payable to The Word Endures and send it to Box 616, Collinsville, Illinois, 62234. You can also make a secure online contribution at thewordendures.org. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a production of LPR, Lutheran Public Radio.